Welcome to the Walton Pie. Today we are going to be talking about cardinalities and how bijection can help us figure out the cardinalities of different sets. So to start off, let's do a quick reminder of what it means for something to be a function. So a function is a well-defined relation, meaning that no element A maps to two different elements B, from a set A, which is called the domain, to a set B, the codomain. Um, a function is bijective if every element b in the set b has exactly one element little a in the set a such that f of a equals b. In other words, a function is bijective if it is both injective and surjective. If you would like a refresher on any of these things, feel free to check out some of my videos in the cards. Um, we define two sets to have the same cardinality if there is a bijection from one set to the other. So, two sets will have the same cardinality if there is a one-to-one -one and onto map from the elements in S to the elements in T. If no bijection exists, then we will write that the cardinalities are not equal. To start off, we need to establish what the natural numbers are. Now, this is a bit confusing because there are two common definitions. You can either have the natural numbers be the set of integers starting at 1, or it's the set of integers starting at 0. So either 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, if you are trying to figure out how to go about a proof for your specific class, be sure to check what the definition of the natural numbers are for your class, but I am going to be using the definition of the natural numbers starting at 0. So we are going to prove that the cardinality of the natural numbers is equal to the cardinality of the integers. So we have to find a bijection from the natural numbers to the integers. This, the function that I have listed here is one example of a bijection. It is not the only one, nor is it necessarily the best one. There are other bijections that would work as well. What we have to do, though, is we have to prove that this function is going to be a bijection, namely that if n is an even number, we send it to half of itself, and if n is odd, we add 1, then divide by 2, and then make it negative. We have to prove that this is actually a bijection from the natural numbers to the integers. So, let's start by proving that f is injective. If you would like to give it a shot, Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, so to get started, we are going to assume that there are two elements a and b where f of a is equal to f of b. So we now have to deal with two cases. What if f of a is less than zero and what if f of a is greater than or equal to zero? Well, if f of a is less than zero, and that means that a and b must both be odd, because the only way to get a negative number out of our function is if n was odd. So, we can now replace f of a and f of b with their expressions knowing that a and b are both odd. So, we get negative of a plus 1 over 2 is equal to negative of b plus 1 over 2. So if we multiply both sides by negative 2, we get that a plus 1 equals b plus 1, which tells us that a equals b. Now, we might want to say that that means it's injective, but we still have to deal with the second case and show that that also works. So in this case, if f of a is greater than or equal to 0, then we know that a and b are both going to be even, because that's the only way to get something that is not negative. Therefore, we can replace f of a and f of b with a over 2 and b over 2, respectively, which then tells us that when we multiply both sides by 2, we get that a equals b. Since a equals b no matter which case we're dealing with, we then know that f is going to be injective. The second thing we have to prove is we have to prove that f is surjective. Give this a try, and then I will continue with the proof momentarily. Okay, to prove something is surjective, we start by picking any element in the codomain. So we are going to start by picking any integer. So, any integer z. We now deal with two cases, if z is less than 0 and if z is greater than or equal to 0. Well, if z is less than 0, then we are going to choose a specific natural number so that f of a is equal to that z. So, 
if z is negative, we want to choose a to be the natural number negative 1 minus 2z. Since negative 2z is greater than 0 and is also going to be an integer, negative z minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So that tells us that a is an odd natural number. So when we evaluate f of a, we are going to see that f of a is equal to z. Apologies for that typo. That b should be a z. If z is greater than or equal to 0, then we are going to just choose a to be 2z. So we plug that in. Because a is an even natural number, we know that f of a is going to be 1 half of 2z, which is just 1z, which is equal to z. Therefore, f is going to be surjective. Since our function is both injective and surjective, that tells us that f is a bijection, which tells us that the cardinality of the natural numbers is equal to the cardinality of the integers. Now, this might not make sense. The natural numbers are a proper subset of the integers. There are integers that are not natural numbers. But what this tells us is it says that they're actually the same size. Infinities mess with your intuition. Just because something is a subset of another set does not mean that their cardinalities are different. We can have two sets, one nested perfectly inside the other one, and still have them be the same size. Now this does not say that every infinite set has the same size. So the integers and the real numbers actually are not the same size, and we will, I will prove that in a future video. But the natural numbers and the integers both have the same size. They both have the same cardinality. Um, their, their cardinality is written a left naught, so it's a squiggly n with a zero subscript. And any set that has that uh, cardinality, so has the same cardinality as the natural numbers, we call that a countably infinite set. Um, and I will again be talking about that in a future video. I hope this video was able to help you understand cardinalities of sets as well as how bijections can help you figure out the cardinalities of different sets. Feel free to check out some of my other videos and stay tuned to see what is coming out next. Have a great day and good luck with your math!